Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today we're going to be looking at some testing and I have got the TIS MFT Pro Plus out again and we're going to look at some of the added value this instrument brings beyond just what we might normally term our multi-function testing and in particular with this one looking at bolt drop. Now this test instrument has loads of other extras built into it such as phase rotation, you can look at harmonics, power factor, it'll do earth leakage, there is loads of added extras in here, EV testing as another, but we're going to set to with the bolt drop, we're going to see how accurate it is, we're going to compare it to electrical OM and do a bit of a design, but I just thought I'd show you how it actually works. If I bring you in closer to begin with, because I realise the screen doesn't always come over in the bright light of things, you can see we are in, um, if we go to the home screen, and then we want to check a volt drop, and you can see it starts asking for voltage to be applied. So with the TIS MFT Pro Plus, you always have the help menu, and that shows you how it wants it connected. So if you were doing a three phase volt drop measurement, it shows you what you need to do with that, and your single phase one. And there's various screens and modes depending on what you're actually going to do. In this case, it's just a single phase. Down here, we have a socket which is wired straight into this distribution board. So we are as good as at source here. And the first thing you need to do is get a reference measurement for your Z. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the TIS MFT Pro Plus, normally you would null your leads with this option here, but it's actually doing um, a kind of same, similar and same process with this button in terms of getting a, a zero value for the Z, if you like. So you can see it's coming up with 0 0.54 and it's popped it in there. And that's off this socket here, which is directly off this distribution board. Now, if we go further into the system now, and just to say, actually, before we do, you can change it if you're on three phase to LL, you can change the, the maximum that you want for your volt drop. And you can also say if you need it to be no trip and such, um, depending on if you've got a, an RCD in circuit, as we do in this application. So if I take the test instrument now, you can see it's lost its measurement of voltage, and we'll wander off past my Remy holder, past the Zappy, and we'll go deep into the install to this socket at end of line in this little space here. So again, I'll bring you down to the, the right level, get the test set into position. If we plug that in, turn the power on, you'll see we start to measure voltage again. Now, all we need to do is press the test button and it's gonna reference that first nulling, if you like, for want of a better phrase, and give us a value. So it's measured Z here is 0 0.73 ohms and we've got a volt drop of 1.7%. So that's quite acceptable for the circuit that we're using here from that distribution board. Now, obviously that's not um, the main intake and incoming point of supply to this premises, but for the intents and purposes of this video, We'll imagine that it is. Now, remember that 0 0.73. If we go into a loop impedance test, make sure we're on no trip again, and we carry out that test, it should produce a figure that makes some sense. And again, with the TIS MFT Pro Plus, all the basics, continuity, insulation resistance, your ZE and ZSs, RCD testing are built in to the box. Now you can see there your Z for the LN value is 0 0.74. So it's kind of giving you that measurement in there, and that's the figure it kind of uses to base its estimation of volt drop. So interesting, but we can look at electrical OM and see how that compares. So remember the 0 0.74, if we go back into the um, volt drop test, we know that our kind of calibration zero in point was 0 0.5 by four at that distribution board. Okay, so I thought we'd jump back to the desk and have a look through Electrical OM. I already got a file built up for Apprentice One to One that I mess around with doing examples for people when they're dropping in. And I've just tweaked a little bit to take some of the other stuff out to make it appear a little bit simpler on the screen record I'm doing. However, if we go up to the top here, you can see we've got our main supply, which is TNCS. We're then dropping down to the main board, which is DB1. We then got our three phase sub main to the distribution board down here, which you will have seen me showing to you earlier on in this video. And we've then got another distribution circuit sub mains coming off to this big Proteus board in the room I'm in now. And we've got to add in our final circuit for this particular um, socket circuit that we've taken our measurement from. So if I come over to four, uh, we're four. And if we go to insert, we're now gonna insert a final circuit. So we can click the circuit now 
and open it up and we can pop in all of its details. So this is, uh, we'll call it uh, socket final circuit and we'll describe it as office circuits. Why not? Office sockets even. Uh, we can say how many watts per point we want on there. So if, you know, we'll make an assumption that it's only really going to pull a maximum of three, we'll say 300. And we've got one, two, three, four, we'll say six sockets on there. Uh, with this one, it is a single core cable. So we need to find that. And it's XLP non-armoured. So we'll make sure we choose that. We'll run it to 70 degrees and it is going to be in conduit on a wall rather than in it. So we'll just change that little option. In conduit on a wall. We've then got our sizes and this is 4mm, which we can use. Uh, the earthing, again, is a separate conductor and that is also 4mm. So we'll make sure we've got that in there. Protective devices, if we go off to here, we need to change it. We're using Proteus breakers, we're using RCBOs, and we are using the switched neutral variety. It is just on a 20 amp breaker. And these are double pull. So make sure we select that there. You can see we've got some selectivity issues. Now this is to be expected just because of the environment I've got here. I've got RCDs stacked up in series. I've got varied values of um, MCBs. So you can see we've got the 100 amp generic fuses. We've then got a 40 amp submain down here through an RCD as well. We've then got a 32 amp submain leading off to the board and a 20 amp um, final circuit on the sockets. Now with your MCBs in particular, the overlap on the tripping curves, as I've demonstrated in videos before, and we've done examples actually of seeing which breakers trip first. You know, all bets are off on a short circuit fault basically, so it's quite difficult. And in a real world environment, we'd be looking to utilize fuses. We wouldn't have so many RCDs in this installation anyway, it's a training space, so we're trying to be super cautious uh, just to show you on that one. So now if we drop back down here, the only thing we really need to specify is the length on this circuit. Uh, so at the minute, I've not done that. So if we go back into that circuit edit option, we choose the phase and neutral conductors. You can see here it's got an estimated length of 15 meters. And actually, that's probably not far off, to be fair. Um, so we'll see what value that is giving us on our calculations. So if we go over to here, we can put show calculations. And that's telling us um, we should be getting a value of 0.76 for our ZS at this point. So you can see there, and our volt drop should be 2.5%, uh, and the maximum we're allowed is five. So it's pretty close, isn't it, in terms of what the design is telling us. And I've guessed that circuit length, it's not gonna be super precise, just looking around the room, um, but it's close enough. And it, it shows you really how, when you design, and it gives you the anticipated figures, and you then go off and install it, you run through your test sequence and you can verify your volt drop through those normal measurements. But as a really quick final check, you saw how fast it was with that test instrument. You can do it on the meter as well. And I found it really, really useful with that TIS MFT Pro is when I'm doing solar surveys because we have very, very tight margins with volt drop on solar systems. We're trying to limit that beyond what we maybe normally would be doing. And you're going to be retrofitting this usually onto existing installs. And we had one, um, I think it was January this year, where there was a sub main down to a garage that we really wanted to make use of for a hybrid inverter rather than um, dragging another new cable down through um, a drive and garden. It was about 50 odd metres. It was a good old run. Fortunately, the prior electrician had brought a six mil four core down there. And just as a real quick thing, on the survey as well as kind of measuring it you're never quite sure what the route is in the ground you make your best guess but you can never be fully confident in it um so play with all those figures but then you know plug the test set in at the source zero off essentially what that z value is go into what was the garage take a measurement and it will give you what the measured volt drop is as a really good guide so i think that's a super useful tool for us as electricians and you know I'm a sucker for buying test sets. I've got pretty much everyone you can imagine. But with that multifunction tester, just putting it in the van, carrying it around and knowing that you can get all of the basic values you need and some really insightful 
detailed data as well off one instrument, one thing to carry is really, really useful. So just so you can see the setup in the background, three phase board, single phase boards just over there, and all those values mapped out in the electrical OM, giving you real insight for your data. That thing is absolutely vast. It goes into so much more detail. I've shared it on the channel before. I've got a playlist that I'll link in the description alongside this video where you can go off if you're interested and look at all of that. There is a 14 day free trial. It does arc flash studies. You can do um, CAD design on there. You can even do 3D design where you bring a room together and have all your sockets drop in. It's super powerful. The reports aspect is off the charts. Every solar job we uh, submit now and have a handover pack for electrical OM takes care of so much in all of that of itself it's a no-brainer there is nothing else on the market if ever you could confidently say there is a market leading piece of something uh, a product software whatever it may be electrical OM is that it's an essential checkout if you've never heard of it before if you think it's just a sales pitch, go off and have a look yourself. Use it free for 14 days. Watch the videos they've got on their channel. Watch some of mine and make your own mind up. If you've got any questions in and around this video, please do drop them in below. For those of you who watch the channel regularly, you'll know I'm a massive TIS fan. They're based up in Clarkeaton, not that far away from where I am. Steve, Mark and the team are absolute legends. And it's always great to bump into them in person and see what other goodies they've got coming along the way. And I get asked a lot about their stuff from the AC side of things and also the PV side of things. And they are my go-to test instruments across the board. You will never be disappointed by TIS in terms of service and value. I think that MFT retails around a thousand pound, probably a little bit less. And for what you get for your bang for your buck, it's unmatched. It's as simple as that. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.